to have made quite a few videos at this point on Wi-Fi deauthing. Wi-Fi deauthing is essentially a denial of service attack against Wi-Fi networks and their devices. It takes advantage of the fact that management frames, these packets of information that handle joining and leaving a network, are simply put unencrypted, even on password protected networks. So because of this, almost any third party can simply run a deauth attack and disconnect a Wi-Fi connected network and device. So that's the all thing in a nutshell, though if you want a more detailed explanation and even tutorials on how you yourself can perform a deauth attack, I'll leave a link to one of my playlists in the description. But for now, let's take a look at how you can detect one of these deauth attacks. Since these management frames that deauth attacks take advantage of are simply put unencrypted, it's pretty simple to just scan the airwaves and detect when one of these attacks is taking place. So we could do this on a computer, though I figured it would be way more fun to use a node MCU. This little IoT development board is powered by an ESP8266, which conveniently supports Wi-Fi. It's also pretty cheap and costs about the same amount as an expensive coffee. I'll leave some links to where you can get one down in the description. Without RGB, what kind of project would this even be? So I've got an RGB LED here. It's a WS2812 breakout board, as well as a few jumper wires to connect up the whole thing. Oh, and of course, a breadboard. If you want to use this particular breakout board's LED thing, you're going to need a diode to reduce the supply voltage since the Node MCU runs on 3.3 volts, whereas our LED is meant to run on 5. That part just took me way too long to figure out. To get around this, you could use some RGB LED which doesn't use logic that runs on 5 volts, or just use any random non-RGB LED. So this whole thing here is a really simple concept. When a deauth attack is detected, our RGB LED will simply turn red, and when the attack is done, or when there's no attack, it simply turns green. A pretty easy way to figure out when someone's up to no good. But of course, deauthentication frames do have legitimate uses in Wi-Fi networks, so this LED will only turn from green to red when it detects a certain amount of deauth frames within a very small time period. So this is really easy to set up. You'll have it up and running in just a few minutes. We're going to be using Space Hunter's code here. He's the person that came up with this whole project. So I'll leave his links down in the description. Okay, so first off, we need to migrate on over to our computer and download and install the Arduino IDE. I'll leave this link in the description. It's pretty simple. Just download the Arduino IDE and you guys can figure out from there. Click next until it's done. Once that's done, you should be able to find the Arduino IDE conveniently installed. And when you open it up, you'll get something like this, just a blank program, essentially. So next up, we need to download the code we'll be using for this project. That's Space Sun's Deauth Detector Code. I'll also have this linked in the description. Just go to the GitHub page and click Download Zip. And we'll get something like this when unzipped, of course. We'll have all of this in there. And you're going to want to double click the Deauth Detector NeoPixel folder. So of course I'm using that breakout board and we'll open that up. So this is the project code. Now by default, the Arduino IDE doesn't support the Node MCU. So we'll have to add that functionality in. So to do that, go over to File, Preferences, and where you see additional board manager URLs, just click this little button here to the right of it. And I'll have this linked in the description, but you just need to uh, copy this. And if there's anything already here, just put this new thing on a new line. If not, then it doesn't really matter. It just points to our JSON file really. So just tap OK. OK, then go to Tools, Board, Board Manager, and give this a second to update. And as you scroll down, you should find ESP8266 by ESP8266 community in here. Just tap that and press install. Now I've already got it installed, which is why it says installed. <laughs> so close that out, go to tools, board, and you'll find ESP8266 modules down here. So the one you pick depends on the node MCU you have. However, we have a node MCU with an ESP12E module. So I'll click that. So we're almost ready to upload this sketch to our Node MCU. There's just one more thing. We need to download the libraries for our RGB LED. So I'll also have this linked in the description. Just go to the Adafruit's NeoPixel GitHub page, tap download zip. 
and you want to drag this folder along with all of this. Ah, no, not that. Okay, so you want to drag this folder into documents, Arduino, libraries, and you'll have it conveniently just there. So I've already got it installed there. And now you're pretty much ready to plug in your Node MCU and upload this sketch here. However, we'll just click verify to make sure everything is good to go. This will just compile the sketch without uploading it and it'll just let us know if there's any compilation errors. And if it says done compiling, then everything is A-OK. -okay. If it gives you an error, well, you've done something wrong. So now we can plug in our Node MCU. Wait, hang on a second, there's one more thing we need to do. So under settings here in this file, you just want to change define LED4 to D4. This tells the program that the, uh, the RGB LED, we're going to be connecting it to the digital four pin. Everything else looks good. So let's plug in our Node MCU. You'll notice that it has a micro USB connection. So you just plug that into your computer. And now if you go to tools and port, you should see a new port come up. COM1 is probably already going to be there on your computer. However, it's going to be the other ports that's just shown up. That's the one you're gonna to want to check. So that's already selected for me and everything else looks A-OK. -okay. All this will be automatically generated once you select the correct board. And now we can just tap upload. All right, so now it's done uploading. You can just disconnect your Node MCU from your computer. And now let's wire everything up. Okay, so now our Node MCU is all ready to go. Fully programmed, we just need to connect the things up. So we're going to pop this in our breadboard, just so we have a row of holes on either side, <laughs> so it's easily accessible. And now your WS2812 module. Let's get that and plug them in right next to our Node MCU. So we're going to be using this side of the holes, the ground, data in, and five volts. So we're not gonna be using these three um, points here. So we just put it here so we have a bunch of space. And we need our diode. So I forget which way these go. I, th I think this is the cathode. Let's find out. <laughs> no harm done. So we're gonna put this in the five volts. So you probably know how breadboards work, though if you don't, you see all of these lines here, so you've got a bunch of holes and each vertical column of holes is connected to each other. So this hole is connected to this one, to this one and to this one. So by plugging this terminal in any of these holes, it's essentially connecting up to five volts. And with the other terminal, we'll just stick it somewhere here. It doesn't really matter. And grab a jump wire red for hot because that's convention and just plug it in there and we're going to connect this one all the way up to v in so v in just gives us a clean five volts essentially i'm pretty sure it just gives us exactly the same as what's going in through the micro usb connection and as far as i know the diode simply steps down the voltage from five volts to four point something something that the um, led module can work with so for the di terminal or data in we're going to connect that up to D4 as that's what we selected in the Arduino IDE. And as for ground, that one simply gets connected up to any of the GND terminals. So it could be here or let's do this one over here. And now I'm pretty sure that's done. So we can just connect our node MCU to our micro USB and plug this into a power source. And there we go, it lights up green because there is currently no deauth attack running. However, we can change the fact that there's no deauth attack running by using, well, oops, <laughs> by using one of these. Now, this is a USB deauther. It's essentially a deauther in a USB stick. So you plug this into any power source and then connect to it via your phone. It has its own, this has its own Wi-Fi hotspot, which you can connect to. And that's over here, just agreed to the terms and conditions. And using this, we can scan for access points. 
and wait a couple of seconds, press reload, and we can see our local access points. I'll tap one to deauth, so let's deauth one of my own access points, because of course you should only mess with your own equipment, and then go to attacks at the top, and we'll run a deauth attack. And now within a couple of seconds, red, right on cue. So now the deauth attack is running, as delineated by the red LED. If we were to stop that deauth attack, green LED. So it's a pretty easy indicator if anyone nearby is running a deauth attack. I actually had to pause the recording there because this deauth just disconnected all of my de devices and just screwed everything up. But uh, we're back on now and you can get these deauthers conveniently at maltronics.com, a site run by myself. It really helps out the channel, it's linked in the description. And not only do you, can you get um, USB deauthers, you can also get deauthers that are standalone, which means you don't need to connect to them using a phone or a laptop because they have their own OLED module and you can control it using a little slider selector switch and it's a lot of good fun. But anyway, just as a cool point of interest, these LED modules here, I'll, I'll disconnect the power for a sec, you can actually daisy chain them. So I've got another one here I bought too, just in case the first one didn't work for some reason. And you'll see it has uh, on the other side of the module, it has a it has a five volt DO and ground, so you can actually connect this five volts up to the data in on this module, and sorry, the five volts to this to the five volts of this module, and the data out of this module to the data in of this module, and the ground to ground, and then you'd have to modify the Arduino code, changing the LED num from one to two, but then you could just upload it and daisy chain them, and you can theoretically have an unlimited number of these. Just um, mind that power draw on your computer there. And voila, I've daisy changed them. I've made that change the code, uploaded it, and yeah, you can fill your whole room with deauth detectors if you want. <laughs> if you're poor and can't afford RGB LEDs, or you can't be bothered to wait for them to come from Amazon, for whatever reason, you can just use the normal deauth detector, the, the normal deauth detector folder in the deauth detector master that we downloaded from Space Hand's uh, GitHub page earlier. Just go to deauth detector, open that Eno file, and you'll see here, this is the new deauth detector uh, Eno file I have here. I haven't been bothered to just record the screen because this is quicker, I need to get this video out. So just LED here, you'll see it sets to two, and that's the LED pin for the built-in LED, the blue LED on the Node MCU itself. So we can go to tools, Hit upload using the correct board. And now when a deauth attack is running, you'll get a little blue LED light up here. When we stop that deauth attack, it will disappear. But when we start it up again, you'll never guess what happens. Boom, and it lights up. So thanks for watching guys. If you do want to find the components used to make this video, I will of course link them in the description. Alternatively, if you do want to get your hands on one of these Wi-Fi deauthors, either the deauthor USB or the deauthor OLED, I will also link those in the description. You can find those at maltronics.com. It'll be on the first line of the description. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you like this video, remember to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, stay tuned for more hacking videos. Have a good one.